Good morning. Good morning. That's a good robust response. Well, I'd like to welcome you, all of you this morning to BCC's annual experiential education recognition awards breakfast. Uh, I've been coming to this for more years than I can count and I enjoyed every year the stories that we're all about to hear. Uh, the stories are about people who are with us here this morning, our inspirational stories, uh, and that really drive home the point about how well this college works for each of us as well as uh, for the communities that we come from. My name is Jim Mathis. I have the privilege of serving as the Master of Ceremonies this morning. I'm also uh, the Chair of the Advisory Board for the Cooperative Education Program here at BCC, a role I've had for a number of years and, and thoroughly enjoy. I'm going to begin this morning by introducing somebody to give you his welcoming remarks. Um, and I don't want to belabor his introduction because I know that uh, a lot of really nice things have been said about uh, Dr. Spraga and will continue to be said because he's retiring next year. But I do want to say, some of you, this may be the first time you've seen him. It, you know, I can't imagine it be the first time you've heard of him, but um, Jack Spraga, when he came here in the year 2000, we, none of us had any idea of what a great thing it was that he came to our community and to our region. Because over the past 16 years, he has doubled the number of people who take courses at Bristol Community College, both for credit and the non-credit courses. He has established, he's not only built this campus, the most recent building which will bear his name is going up as we speak, the solar uh, uh, parking area that most of us probably drove through this morning in getting here, and other expansion that's happened here, but he's established campuses in New Bedford and in Attleboro and now one in Taunton. So he's taken BCC and immersed it in all of our communities. And I personally, I'm, a, I'm an alum, I went to school here, I graduated in 1983. This school was transformational in my life. I hope it uh, will be the same for those who are going, who are here today and who are still attending BCC. Take everything that they give you here and run with it as far and as hard as you can. But back to Jack, Dr. Spraga is a true inspiration. He, is, he personifies a professional in education who wants as many people as possible to have the opportunity to improve their lives through education. Please welcome to open our program this morning, Dr. Jack Spraga. It's hard to live up to that introduction. Uh, Jim, thank you very much. Actually, in 2000, uh, Jim was one of the first people that I interacted with in New Bedford, with the Chamber in New Bedford and the, and the Greater New Bedford WIB. Uh, and he continues to be active uh, throughout the community, all throughout Southeast uh, Massachusetts. Uh, but that was a wonderful introduction, and uh, I can't follow it. I don't know what else to say. Uh, I will say that uh, experiential uh, education is uh, on the rise. I'm so glad to see uh, the governor and uh, uh, federal officials <clears throat> uh, talking about the importance of internships and cooperative education and service learning. Uh, I have talked about service learning and the connection of service learning uh, uh, really for 30 years uh, back uh, long before I arrived here. Uh, but it's so important, it enriches our education, and I cannot um, uh, thank the uh, employers and the mentors uh, uh, sufficiently for the value that they have added uh, to our students' education. Very proud of our students and going through these activities, but they wouldn't happen without the employers and the mentors at the workplace that uh, oversee uh, what our students are doing and the value that they add to it. So it's good to have information in the classroom, but as you know, uh, it's very important to connect it with, uh, quote, real life. Uh, a lot of people don't think real life happens on our ca academic campuses. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that, but uh, the importance of, uh, the, the, let's say, the workplace and uh, the skills that are imbued upon our students, uh, and I thank you all uh, for that. We're going to move ahead quickly. I want to be respectful of your time, and uh, thank you again for coming. There's plenty of food. Uh, grab some more, uh, please do, and uh, I want to thank our culinary arts program uh, for the great work that they do, Chef Caressimo and uh, those students. How about the, 
Este... <laughs> This is another good example of experiential learning. They're trying it out on you, and it's working out okay, right? Well, let's move ahead, and uh, let's have a wonderful morning, and thank you very much for all you do for BCC. Thank you. If you're not kidding about the food, there's a table full of desserts right here. If anybody wants to come over and grab some, they look, they look pretty tasty. Uh, we have a couple of special guests this morning that I'd like to point out uh, who are with us here this morning. We have former State Senator Joan Menard. Joan, welcome this morning. Also part of the leadership team here at the college. We have State Rep. Bob Cazero from New Bedford. Bob. and State Representative Carol Fiola from Fall River. Both of whom are well known for their commitment to education and in particular to this college. Thank you for being here and thank you for your support for BCC. Uh, we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna have a, a panel that's gonna come up. Uh, the panel discussion is gonna be moderated by the Dean of the Lash Center for Teaching and Learning. Please welcome Dr. Suzanne Buglione. Good morning. It's my honor and privilege to uh, help you uh, celebrate these particular experiential education programs that are part of the Lash Division for Teaching and Learning. I want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge a few individuals before we ask the panel members to come forward. I want to thank particularly the BCC Foundation who generously uh, supplies the funds for this breakfast. I'd also like to uh, thank the advisory committee members. Um, those are members who serve to inform our programs, help them develop, and we truly appreciate the work that the advisory committee members do. I'd like to take a moment now to call upon the staff from these programs, as well as the faculty who teach courses uh, in service learning and in cooperative education. Could you take a moment to please stand, staff and faculty? You all know that experiential education is a lot about human touch and these individuals take extra care and concern to make sure that these opportunities are provided to these students, that are supported by these students, and that we continue to innovate um, in experiential education. And so I thank you very much. I'm going to also ask uh, a couple of other individuals to stand. These folks comprise the committee that has been working diligently, including coming here at the crack of dawn this morning. Could Jen Deckers Mitchell, Luz Perez, and Diana Painter please stand? Thank you so much for your diligent attention to every little detail for us this morning. So it is my pleasure now to, uh, to share with you a little bit about each of these programs and then we'll move quickly to our panel members. So there are some slides to guide us. Uh, Bristol Community College has three programs that are focused on experiential education. Connecting Activities is our program that places students from uh, high schools in the greater New Bedford area in, um, in internships, high school students, and also helps to prepare them for career uh, and college readiness. And so it's an important program that we support um, and we serve a great number of students in that program. The second one is our civic engagement program, which comprises our service learning, our community leadership uh, workshop series, our mobile market, and our national uh, volunteer service awards. And you can see that we touch uh, hundreds of students um, and community partners uh, in this program. 
And then lastly is our cooperative education program. This is a unique model whereby our students are placed in internships, but simultaneously in a course that prepares them for development in the workplace and career. And so we have a very large and growing number of students um, in all three of these programs. And uh, these three programs have really moved our experiential education forward, as President Sprague noted. Thank you for those slides. So let me ask the panelists to come to stage, if you will. Let's give them a hand as they walk up. For those of you who have come to this breakfast before, you've often heard a keynote address. We decided this year that it would be wonderful to hear from the voices of the people who are most involved in our communities and students that have been involved in our programs. So to my right is Amy Blanchett, a student at Bristol Community College. Uh, I also want to note that Amy is the recipient of the Newman Civic Fellows Award and will be receiving that award next week at our awards night. Yes, let's give her a hand. Next to Amy's right is Jamie Crossman. Jamie is the president of the United Way of Attleboro and Taunton and we're happy to have her with us. To Jamie's right is Michaela Lasur, who is a student here at Bristol Community College. Thank you, Mr. Michaela. <laughs> to Michaela's right is Pat O'Connor, who is the owner of the New Bedford Bay Sox. <laughs> and last but not least, to Pat's right is Talia Brooks, who is a New Bedford High School student who's participated in the Connecting Activities program. I'll ask you all first to take a moment and introduce yourself and say a little bit about your involvement. Amy, will you start us? Hello, everybody. So I am a full-time student here. Um, I'm a general studies mass transfer student. I do plan upon graduation to transfer to a four-year college and major in English and minor in journalism. I am also a mom to an 11-year-old and I work in the Office of Civic Engagement. I also am a writing center tutor and I work for Phenom, which is Public Higher Education Network of Massachusetts. Um, I, did, I have done numerous <laughs> service learning courses and I actually uh, enjoy them a lot, as you can tell. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit about me. Good morning. My name is Jamie Crossman. I am the president and CEO of the United Way of Greater Attleboro in Taunton, and I'm also a former alum of BCC. I started way back in the day before this campus was even standing, so I'm very proud to be here. Um, I partner with a lot of different organizations in the community, the nonprofits that a lot of the students engage with, um, internships and learning experiences, as well as the for-profit sector, where we work with for-profits to help them fulfill their corporate social responsibility to the community. So we're very honored to be here serving in that capacity. Good morning, my name is Michaela Sierra and I am part of the Bristol Community College Cooperative Program here. I'm graduating in June with my associate's degree in communication. I was lucky enough to partake in two wonderful co-op positions this semester and last semester. One with WPRI Channel 12 The Roadshow and the other with Rhode Island Monthly The Magazine. I'm actually also furthering my education over at UMass Dartmouth come next fall and we'll my mission is to continue on taking more internships in something that I love. Good morning, my name is Pat O'Connor, currently the owner of the Bay Sox. This is my fifth year with the Bay Sox. Um, I, following school, I served in the United States Coast Guard 
uh, for five years. Then I, I had a career as a software development manager at IBM. Uh, and then I took the job with the Bay Sox, and it's, it's been great uh, trying to run a baseball team since that's my passion. Uh, in addition to the Bay Sox, I also own a place called Little Fenway, which is a, a backyard set of wiffle ball fields in Vermont where we raise money by working with various nonprofit charities. Good morning. I'm a senior at New Bedford High School, and I'm part of the Connecting Activities program. And my senior year, I interned with the New Bedford Department of Public Infrastructure with Manny Silva and Anna Rosa. So a couple of questions for our panelists, and I'll ask you to hold your applause until the end. So for our students, could you tell us a little bit about what the most important thing you learned was or what kind of impact your experience had for you? Anyone want to begin? Thank you, Michaela. My experience with BCC's Cooperative Education program is something I wouldn't change for the world. The experience I had was one that I never thought back in high school, freshman year, that I would be having. The fact that I was able to take my learning outside of the classroom and network and make connections was the best. The relationships that I established, learning firsthand what it is to do something that you are so interested in, being able to learn about the field of interest. Mine is communication. So being able to learn about broadcasting and journalism and writing and Nicole Heaney and David LePage have done a wonderful job with the program, allowing students to really reach their goals, follow their dreams, their passions, and really see the horizon. So, Talia or Amy, want to add to that? I had so many wonderful experiences in my service learning classes. Um, it also helped that I had great professors, like Professor Warren sitting over there, who I know probably doesn't want me to mention her name, but <laughs> she was great. Um, I did two service learning courses with her. In the fall, I did, um, for her US government class, we did the floor of a charter revision um, committee, and we worked to um, organize a forum here on campus where students, staff, faculty, and community members could come and learn about the charter, charter revision and um, how we're, it's, it would, I'm sorry, it was going up on the ballot in November and we needed to inform all the citizens of Fall River that they needed to vote on it because it was important. The charter had been revised in a little over 80 years. So it needed to be done. Um, it was a lot of work to organize it, but um, the class all worked together with me. And we did this forum and it was very well attended. It was um, aired over the, the next two weeks on the cable television network. And we actually ended up, I mean, it wasn't just us, but the charter did pass. So it was amazing to organize the forum, but also see it get passed in, you know, in a government class firsthand where we got that experience and were able to know that we were part of something that big. It was, it was really amazing. Uh, in my state and local government class, we actually went to the state house March 7th for Public Higher Education Advocacy Day, and we advocated for higher education. We met with um, some of our state representatives, Carol Fiola, she was one of them, <laughs> and Pete Daly, you were great too. Um, and we uh, addressed our concerns with them, and they heard us, and it was, and it was amazing. Carol actually was at another conference and ran over to meet with us, so it was really nice, it was appreciated, and um, Senator Rodericks was also there, I don't think I see him here today, but it was amazing to go to the State House. Some of us had never even been there before, so it, what a perfect fit in a state and local government class to actually go out and, and experience firsthand the State House and, and advocating for higher education. We're all college students, so we were advocating for ourselves for our education, so that was an amazing thing to be a part of. Thank you. Talia? For me, I found that I actually liked working in a place where I was always always doing something, I was always productive. And sometimes I would work by myself or sometimes I would work with someone else. When I worked by myself, I would do things like sorting land plot cards because it's civil engineering. 
or when I worked with other people, I'd watch them use AutoCAD, I didn't do things like that. So I found, for me, I found um, that I like working alone and working with people, but I always like to be doing something. Thank you. For the students, was there anything that surprised you about your experience? Anyone want to respond to that? Yes, I will. <laughs> Um, in the beginning of pr probably every single service learning class I had, most of the students did not want to do it. They thought that it was going to be a lot of work. They didn't know where to start, what community service partner they were going to go with, or what kind of work they were going to have to do, or how long it was going to take. And little by little, the class just kind of took shape. And you know, we got, I, we got a lot of community service partners, or we focused on one project. And as we worked together, you could just see the class kind of transform. And then all of a sudden, we were kind of like a team, like a family. And I remember some of the students in the class saying to me, you know, before I came to this class, I had never like became friends with anyone in, in my classes. I, I just went to class and I left. I, I didn't have any relationship with any of the students. And this was just an amazing experience. It, it helped me to bond with my fellow classmates and to learn, you know, that there's more there than, you know, just asking someone, you know, what was the homework. We actually all cared about what was going on both in and outside of school and just, it, it was just a big family and we all keep in touch and we all ended up enrolling in other classes together. It was, um, an amazing experience to do service learning in every single one of my classes because that was a trend that I noticed in every single class. Thank you. Anyone, Talia or Michaela, something that surprised you? Mine is similar to Amy's as well. The relationships that you make are incredible. You're actually working in a field where you're able to interact with people who have the same interests as you. They share the same passions. They'll help you to learn. I mean, I've become really, really close to all my supervisors. One who's here today, Jamie Colo, who helped me really learn not only about myself, but my skills, especially my writing skills. I feel like I've grown a long way and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't create the relationships. It started here with BCC and the cooperative education program allowed us to expand further, ranging in so many different internships and it really touches the hearts of everyone. Thank you. Before doing my internship, I had a lot of worries. I either thought that I was gonna be super bored because I wasn't gonna be allowed to do anything or that everything would be too hard for me to understand. But I was actually surprised when I got there that I was greeted with a smile every day. Um, I always had someone to ask questions and even though I thought I wasn't gonna understand anything and I would just be confused the entire time, it, was, it wasn't that hard to understand and I was always able to, again, ask questions. And doing things like sketching land plots from legal descriptions is kind of scary at first, but it's good when you have someone to help you and it's not that hard. So we've heard some inspiring words from our students. Let's hear a little bit from our community partners. Jamie, will you share with us a little bit about uh, what value students can bring to nonprofit organizations? and our community needs? Sure. Um, students actually bring a lot of value to nonprofit organizations and for-profit organizations through learning experience, and they don't realize it. First of all, on the nonprofit side, having an extra body in the office for any amount of time is a greatly valued resource. Nonprofits will run their programs so tightly with their budget that they don't often have time to venture down into special projects or look into other areas that they'd like to work in. And when we have a student come in, it really allows us that opportunity while the student is um, engaged with either within the program or working from the administrative side. The other things are ideas and fresh perspectives. You know, sometimes we're all old dogs doing the same thing month after month, year after year. And when a student comes in and they have bright ideas and a fresh perspective, it really brings some new things to light. They possess a quality of objectivity. They aren't immersed in our daily work. So some of the questions that they ask 
are really valued, really important and eye-opening for us on a lot of different levels. And skills, um, they bring in some incredible cutting edge skills from what they're learning in skills in their um, classes into the workforce that a lot of times we will adapt. We recently had one from the marketing perspective that has helped change how we work with social media. So like us on Facebook, please. <laughs> and um, actually for me, when we're working with students, um, it's very inspirational and very motivational because they re-energize us as a staff and as a team because we want to pour our hearts out and share everything we have with them while we have them for that limited amount of time. And they re-energize us and they rebond us and we're all the better for having that active engagement. So it is a partnership. Great, thank you. Pat, would you like to add to that? Sure, um, I think Jamie hit the nail on the head on a lot of things that the interns bring as far as value. I'll just add that um, when we hire interns, we really look for the best available interns. So we don't usually try to zero in on a specific job or, or skill because what happens is when we bring them in, uh, we realize that the scope of their talents is much broader than what we may have envisioned not knowing them. It's, it's kind of like the NFL draft. When you, when you draft someone, you, you, you take the best available, not necessarily a specific position. Um, I will say that they bring tons of energy to the team and the collaboration that we get from the interns is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I say that the, the uh, internship doesn't end uh, when the semester ends. They are part of the Baysox family, so they become part of us for much longer than the few months that they're with us. Thank you. And for our community partners, were there any things that surprised you about your experience with the interns? Well, for me, it wasn't from an intern pers perspective. I had the pleasure of working um, with the human service class over at the Attleboro campus. And once I had addressed that class that evening, I had offered up my services to help um, put anyone together with any resource in the community that they could to help them with either research papers or, or just in general. And I did have a couple of interactions from that meeting. And to me, that was, that was incredible that the students took advantage of that opportunity to start their networking for their career. Yeah, I would just add that um, I think the overhead in actually managing the interns it was a lot lower than what I anticipated. They hit the ground running um, in most cases, and I also, you know, learned how flexible they can be, um, so that they end up not only filling gaps on things that can't get done, but they do things that well beyond what you know my expectations were going into the internship. Thank you. So we're so very grateful for the, to hear the voices of the students who have had these experiences and for our community partners who have created the opportunities for these experiences. Anyone have any parting words? Um, I have some advice, I guess, for the students. I guess there's three things that come to my mind that I think would be helpful. One is I, I think that the students should know what their blind spots are. What do I mean by blind spots? I mean really the difference between what you perceive when you perceive as a strength and what other people perceive as a strength. If there's a gap there, you need to know what those blind spots are so that you can work on them because I think that's where you can gain the most. Uh, secondly, I think you want to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Again, that's another area. If you're uncomfortable, you're spending your time working on the things that you need to get better at. And I guess the third thing I'd say is make commitment integrity part of your DNA. In other words, employers expect you to be reliable, dependable, and do completed staff work. So if you're given a problem, take it all the way to the finish line because the employers really don't have a lot of time to spend sort of coaching you along the way. As much as we like to have mentors, we're also very limited in our bandwidth to, to work with you. So the more you can do on your own independently um, in solving problems, the better off uh, the, the business is. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. And one of the questions that came my way is, why is it important for a student to serve the community? Well, I feel it's important for everyone to serve the community. It makes a statement to the character of the individual that you are. It shows that you care about others and you can make a difference. And it actually helps you sometimes to count your own blessings when you're feeling down. Even though you're engaged in community service or learning experiences, you learn along the line. It's just not about giving back. 
And it helps with networking and building relationships because no matter where you are in your career, whether you're starting out or you've been working for many, many years, networking and relationships are critical. And sometimes it often can help you affirm the choice that you made with your career, and sometimes it helps you realize you need to change your path. So community service is very, very important. You serve as mentors and role models without even realizing it. And it feels really good um, to help and to give back to your community. And in the United States today, just working through the United Way system, we have three million people engaged in community service. So it really can't be all that bad if three million people are on board. Thank you, Jamie. Any words of advice or parting words from students? Yeah, I just want to say, I see a lot of students uh, students here in the audience that I actually had in my classes and did um, service learning with. So I just wanted to ask if they could stand up and we can give them a round of applause because I have done community service before I even got here to BCC and it was natural for me to kind of go into service learning. But for the students who have never done it before, I know how hard it can be at first to kind of emerge yourself into it. So I think that you guys do deserve some credit. So if you did service learning and you're a student, can you just stand so we can give you a round of applause? Could I ask for the students who've done an internship to also stand? If you've done an internship, fantastic. Great. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and I wanted to also touch on a community of service project that I did in my Psychology 295 class with Dr. Zom. I was also able to do a community leadership project in April. I did the clothesline project, and it was uh, such an amazing experience to be able to do that. Um, domestic violence is a cause that's close to my heart, so I chose the clothesline project to try to make an impact on our school and our community. And I had the clothesline project come in. The Women's Center of New Bedford brought theirs, but the BCC students actually came and made their own shirts, and we made over 40 shirts um, at the clothesline project on, on the day that we did it. And it, I had students come up to me crying, you know, thanking me for doing the clothesline project, telling me their stories. Um, it, it's a different thing when you talk about it, but when you like write it down, it, it becomes real. And I noticed that a lot of the students, they started to write it down. And then they just kind of kept writing. It was, it was therapeutic for them. So it was an amazing experience to be able to bring that here. So I'd like to thank Dr. Zom, who was another service learning faculty member, for all of her uh, guidance and all the coursework that you taught me. It was, it was actually a community leadership course on a section that I took. And I learned all about leadership. Even though I already knew a, a, quite a bit, I actually learned the scholarly, scholarly research of it. And that was such a cool thing to learn this semester, so thank you. So my advice for students is um, follow your passion. You have to work a lot of years in your career. You want to be happy. You want to go home at the end of the day feeling proud of the work you're doing. It's okay to change paths during the course of your lifetime. Um, I've been a hairstylist, a real estate salesman, a, a certified medical assistant, a licensed bartender, and real estate agent. Um, so many, many paths will take you on an ultimate journey, and at the end of the day, you'll be blessed to be able to have the opportunity to sit and share your story as I have today. So follow your dreams. Thank you. I agree with you on so many levels to follow your passions and follow your dreams. Take advantage of the services that are made available to you. And I really, really thank Nicole Heaney for all her work she's done with me um, the past year. It really has given me so much. And the fact that I have grown so much as a person and being able to see that growth um, has actually set me up to go after one of my biggest dreams and 
going after something you love. You know the saying, you'll never work a day in your life. I, my mom was actually diagnosed with a rare blood disease 14 years ago. And I've been working closely with a nonprofit organization, the American Partnership for Eosinophilic Disorders. And they've been seeing a lot of my work with volunteering and with co-op and how I've gone out with broadcasting and writing where I actually got a position on the staff now where I'm helping to raise awareness, doing press releases and getting things ready for this week's Awareness Week. And it just shows that anything is possible and you can go after your dreams, but you have to get involved. It starts with you and then you have everyone there to help you. I'll just say the nucleus about which we form is, is, is really to bring people together on a baseball diamond to have fun and you can do amazing things in the community. So go Bay Sox. This year I used my internship as a way to figure out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I'm going into college this, um, this, um, this uh, September and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I like math, I knew I wanted to do math, I like engineering, but I wasn't sure where I wanted to go with that. So being able to be in an engineering setting and getting kind of my first experience in like a professional environment because I've never had a job, so this is kind of like my first job experience as well. I found kind of like everyone has said, my strengths and weaknesses, what I want to work on, what I'm good at, and I figured out that I like engineering. I like doing this. This is what I like. And I'm going to be attending WPI in the fall. Well, I think we've gotten a good dose of inspiration this morning, and I want to thank all the panel members. One last round for them, please. Thank you so much. So now we'll transition, uh, and Jim will come back to us as our MC. Thank you for your attention. What a terrific panel. Uh, in the years past, we've had guest speakers here. We've had some really good ones, but I don't think we've ever had a program at this breakfast that was anywhere near as good as what we just experienced with these panelists. I want to thank each of them for their participation. Did a great job. Um, all of them did great, but I, I, uh, I really want to just focus for a second on Talia from uh, New Bedford High School. I'm a New Bedford guy. Uh, no disrespect to Fall River, Attleboro, or Taunton, or any of the other communities in between. But I see the headmaster for New Bedford High here too, and I'm sure that, that she's just as proud as I am right now. You represented our city and your high school quite well today, Talia. Thank you. So we're moving a little furniture here before we can get started. Uh, we had Pat here from the Bay Sox. It reminded me of uh, a couple things. First is that the Red Sox are doing quite well this year. If I'm not mistaken, I think the Red Sox right now are tied for first and the Yankees are in last place. <clears throat> that reminds me of a story that I wanted to share of, uh, there's a Red Sox fan and a, and a Yankee fan. These, they were really good friends. Well, the Yankee fan was going to a game down in New York and just as he was about to enter the stadium, he sees a little boy outside the stadium with a wagon and there's puppies in a wagon. So he walks up to the little boy and he says, little boy, what kind of puppies are those? The little boy smiled and he said, those are Yankee puppies. And that just made his day. He went in and he watched the game. The Yankees won that day, unfortunately. Well, the following week, he invited his friend who's a Red Sox fan down because the Sox were playing the Yankees down in New York. They're going to the game. They're about to walk in. Here's this a week later, the same little boy. 
got the wagon and the puppies are there. And so the Yankee fan smiles and he says, come with me. I want you to meet somebody. So he walks up to the little boy and he says, hey, little boy, tell my friend here what kind of puppies those are. The little boy looks at him and says, those are Red Sox puppies. He says, Red Sox puppies? Last week you said they were Yankee puppies. He said, that's before they opened their eyes. <laughs> you might be able to use that in the political sense over the course of the next few months as well. Again, I want to thank the, uh, the panelists. You guys did an outstanding job, all of you. Uh, right now, what I'd like to do is the individuals who are going to be receiving awards this morning, I ask that you come up and to the area over here on the side uh, so that we can have you ready to go. It'll make things move a little bit quicker. And so if you're one of the award winners, uh, go stand over here. And I'd like to ask uh, President Sp uh, Spraga to join me back up on the stage again. You know, uh, Jamie just said some things about being active in the community and civic engagement. And uh, when I went to school here, and not that long ago, civic engagement was not a salient part of the experience here at Bissell Community College. And, uh, and now it is embedded in this school for every student who goes here. And I think we've learned just how important that can be. So here to present... Uh, our first awards is going to be the coordinator of the Civic Engagement Program at Bristol Community College, Aaron Smith. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I hope that uh, you've been enjoying the morning so far. So it is my privilege to give some awards out to some very fantastic people. Um, I'm going to try to keep it short, uh, but I could probably go on for quite some time about all of these folks. So our first award recipients um, are incredible people that lead extraordinary lives um, despite how much time that they have to give to their uh, respective careers. They are strong advocates for the arts, for community engagement, and upon seeing an opportunity to bring um, AHA Nights from New Bedford to Fall River, particularly Sandy and Dave Dennis, um, did a phenomenal series that's continuing to flourish. Um, and this past fall semester, they actually took on an entire class of our service learning students who were in an art history class, um, which was a, a pretty extraordinary feat. Um, so I will, I will stop there, and I would just like to give these folks a round of applause, please. <laughs> And a testament to how involved they are and how devoted they are to, um, to our program and to this college and to the community. Um, Dave has an incredibly busy day today um, and they have to rush off, but I uh, thank you very much for taking the time. I know it's a, it's a pretty crazy day for you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much again. Thank you, thank thank you, you very you. much. Thank you very much. And I'll be in touch about July as well. Thank you so much. All right. Photo ops are important. <clears throat> All right. So the next award that I would like to present is to one of our extraordinary service learning faculty members um, who absolutely hates recognition, as Amy got to point out a little bit on the panel. When I told her she was receiving this award, she said, give it to somebody else. And I said, Jane, it doesn't work like that. You did a phenomenal job this year, and you're going to get recognition. Um, so Jane Warren has her own family law practice, but additionally teaches here at BCC um, and has incorporated service learning in a variety of her courses, um, particularly in government. As Amy was able to talk about, um, through Jane's phenomenal teaching style and tenacious spirit, she was able to uh, get her students involved in a variety of community-based projects, including going to soup kitchens, organizing a voter registration drive on campus, as well as the Fall River Charter Commission Review, um, which was a forum, as Amy noted, a forum that uh, was open to faculty, staff, students, and community members intended to engage people in the local government of this great city. So I would like to present our Service Learning Faculty Award to Jane Warren. Thank you, Jane. Okay. 
Okay, I know you are. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So the final award that I'm going to present um, is our student award. So we have many phenomenal students that come through this um, through our program in different in different ways. Um, but every year there's at least one that stands out for all of the great work that they were doing. Um, so I'm going to present this award to Millie Sanchez Gatone, Milagros, but I call her Millie. Um, Millie is a strong advocate for the prevention of domestic violence. Throughout the year, and probably many years before this year, um, Millie has taken a lot of time to educate the community on resources and tools um, to prevent domestic violence. This year, she was one of our community leadership students who uh, organized a panel and presentation um, that was incredibly powerful and impactful on the New Bedford campus. She also brought with her to that presentation a variety of resources available in the New Bedford community. Additionally, to this particular award, um, Millie is also receiving our President's Volunteer Service Award um, for all of the work that she's done in the community. And that was actually for her work for, for last year and this year. Um, so Millie, please come over and receive your award. Absolutely, thank you. I wanted to mention one other thing about Millie was last week uh, in the statewide level, uh, there were 29 campuses of uh, uh, public higher education and uh, each campus or each college uh, selects a student uh, to be honored uh, at the State House and with Governor uh, Baker and uh, Secretary of, uh, of Education Jim Pizer. Uh, and Millie was our winner from uh, BCC. She was our selectee and our honoree. And I'm sure she sees uh, the similarity between Governor Baker and myself presenting. The <laughs> but uh, let's have it, a, a great re recognition for Millie's great accomplishment. Our next award is going to have to do with connecting activities. And uh, many moons ago, when I worked with the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce, I got to work up close and personal with the connecting activities person and with the individual I'm about to announce. And uh, we're about to hear another great story, as we heard earlier in the panel presentation from Talia, just about how powerful that experience can be. They don't just go in to work for an employer. It's all part of a very highly structured program uh, where staff works real hard to make sure that uh, it, you know, through a work-based learning plan that it's going to be a good educational experience. It's going to be a good experience for the employer and a good experience for the student. So to announce our next award is going to be Kirsten Almeida with Connecting Activities. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Could I have Sarah come up, please? Um, the Connecting Activities program um, works with Greater New Bedford Area High Schools and we work with several hundred students each year from various high schools placing them in um, unpaid internship opportunities throughout the New Bedford, Greater New Bedford Area. And Sarah Pereira here is a senior at Dartmouth High School and she completed her internship this fall at Lifetime Financial Group in Dartmouth. While at her site, she assisted with day-to-day -day operations, including service work, outreach, and working one-on-one -on -one with a pair planner on client financial plans and investments. Her outstanding communication and interpersonal skills allowed her to seamlessly fit into that office environment. Sarah's supervisor, Deborah Moreau, spoke very highly of her and of the positive experience she and the staff at Lifetime had while hosting Sarah, stating, it was a pleasure having Sarah intern with our company. She always came with a smile and eager to work. It didn't matter if the task was big or small, she would always give 100% of herself into her work. Sarah is a very bright young woman and has a bright future ahead of her. 
This valuable internship opportunity at Lifetime allowed Sarah to solidify her college and career goals. She will be attending UMass Amherst and majoring in finance this fall. I'm honored to present this year's Connecting Activities Experiential Education Award to Sarah Pereira. The next award is going to have to do with cooper the cooperative education program at BCC. My personal involvement with cooperative education goes back to the very beginning. Uh, the late Jane Staples was the champion of the program, and I remember when it began with a, a grant, a three-year grant, and uh, we had a small advisory board at the time, and we were concerned, can we make this something that is valuable enough that it'll become embedded in the college? At the time, you know, back then, Cooperative education was like the province of Northeastern University. And other places, other schools didn't seem to do that much of it. Uh, Jane was tenacious, to say the least. We had the support of uh, former President Farley. And the program has flourished since. It is indeed embedded, as is evidenced here today, uh, and serves literally hundreds of students every year. So with that, I'd like to bring up David LePage and Nicole Heaney with the Cooperative Education Program to present the next awards. Good morning, everyone. So this year, I get the honor of presenting the, our Employer Award. So this year's Employer Award goes to an individual who possesses all the qualities of recipient and more. She is a great supervisor and mentor, pro uh, provides a variety of opportunities for student learning, has high expectations for her students, and is overall just a really great person. The student who nominated Deb this year said, I looked forward to each day and the challenges that came with it. It was a wonderful experience with an incredible director and team. We've been working with Deb for probably about three years now, and year after year, um, st student interns have had nothing but wonderful things to say about her, her team at Infection Prevention, and the experience provided. We felt it was time to recognize her for all of her hard work and dedication. This year's Employer Award goes to Deb Highlander. Good morning. I'm so proud and honored to announce this year's Cooperative Education Student of the Year Award that's being presented to Maximina Caban. Maxi began her academic career by taking advantage of a few GED classes that we offered at our New Bedford campus through a grant. Not only did she thrive in those classes, but she was known for always encouraging other students along the way to stay in the program. As a result of her success, Eileen Harrington at New Bedford encouraged her to stay and earn her degree at BCC. Although she faced some struggles along the way, as many of our students do, balancing life with an academic life at college, she's earned two degrees at BCC, one in computer forensics and most recently one in criminal justice. She interned this semester with the Bristol County Superior Court probation. Here she had the opportunity to work with probation officers conduct agency evaluations, and assist probation officers in court. Maxie's supervisor, Grace Montero, states that she's bright and energetic and a dedicated person who lends enthusiasm and offers well-guided input to everyone she encounters. After graduating in June, Maxie will continue on to earn her bachelor's degree in social work. Please congratulate Maxie.
Well, this has been a great program this morning, and I knew we were going to hear some great stories, and we certainly did. And there are probably literally thousands more like it out there that we weren't able to, to recognize here this morning. I, want to, I do want to thank all of you for coming. Um, you know, if you notice the banners, that we honor the past, and we celebrate the present, and we shape the future. This is the 50th anniversary of Bristol Community College, and that banner really speaks volumes about uh, what this college has been, is, and will be. Uh, for people uh, in generations to come. We're all Pied Pipers for Bristol Community College. Every one of us has the ability to go out and talk to the folks in our lives. It might be people in our family or people we work with, people who are, who are our friends only on Facebook. Uh, I never knew I had so many friends. Um, but take every opportunity that, that you have to speak about this school. Uh, there are a lot of stories of folks who came here not thinking that they really could do well with their education and maybe not even have having that great of a, of a view of what their future might be. And they come here and, and this is a place where that changes. Uh, so be a Pied Piper and, and take that message out there. I want to ask two other things before we end the program. One is all of the award winners, uh, when we do finish, I ask you to gather over here. Uh, we want to be able to take some photos with the award winners. And on the back of the program that you have, there's a small evaluation, a questionnaire. Please take the time to fill that out. And what you can do is you can leave them on your table. They'll be collected afterward. They can be very helpful in planning this event, uh, events like this and others in the future. So with that, it's a great day. Um, congratulations to everybody who was recognized. Thank you to all of our community partners here at BCC. Have a great day. Thanks.